Hello folks and welcome to the channel or welcome back and this is going to be another episode of rebuilding the tower room. I know it's been a while but I had many other things to do and now I had a few days of leave and I was able to continue on the tower itself. We're almost finishing with the drywalls and I'm going to show you something about the window frames because I had questions on that before and a little bit about the electricity and then we're going to wrap it up and finish it all off. So let's have a look. Okay. Well, electricity, um, we'll have to run all the cabling into the walls or behind the walls. And for that, I'm using pre-cabled flexible uh, tubes. And I'm installing everything with 2.5 square millimeters. So I always have three wires, a neutral face and a ground. And I like this system uh, because it's very flexible and easy to use and it's not very expensive. You can plaster it in the walls if you want to, but then of course you have to cut some grooves in the walls or you can just have it behind the drywall. And that's what I've been using. Pretty good system. Uh, it all depends, of course, where you live because maybe in some countries you're not allowed to do this. Uh, so you need to check your local legislation on electrical installations. Uh, but over here, this is quite common to be used. And inside the tube, you have actually three conductors and you can just cut it off here with a knife. And you can see I have a blue one, which is my neutral. I have a brown one, which is my face. And I have a yellow green one, which is my ground. Now you can get those tubes uh, with wires with different sections. Typically wall sockets where I live have to be wired up with all three of them and 2.5 square millimeters. You're limited on how many outlets you can have per circuit. And I think it's about six. For light uh, circuits, uh, you could use 1.5 millimeters, but I don't do that. I, I use everything at 2.5, it's easier. But you cannot mix, of course, uh, wall outlets with light switches. Uh, you cannot do that. You have to have separate circuits for outlets and light points. All right, so uh, let me show you on how we're going to fit this into the wall. And this is how it will look like at the end. Uh, you have the socket installed into the wall, uh, secured it, the cable comes through it, and now you can actually install your uh, light switch or your outlet socket. We have run the cables in the back of the drywalls or into the walls, it doesn't really matter, but we need to terminate it into a pocket or a socket. And therefore I'm using these plastic sockets, as you can see over here. These are very handy and they are self-locking but they are not very strong, sturdy, I would say. Uh, if you put it in a real wall, then, then they will be very well held in place, so then it's all right. But if you put it onto a piece of drywall, then you will see that they are you know, just held by the drywall itself. So if you're putting plugs in and out, you may come out. So therefore, I always make a support part in the back, and this is the support part. So that is actually going in the back. So I place it behind the drywall, uh, then I put the plastic pot through it like this, and then uh, it's in the wall behind, and then I'll drill it with a few screws, as you can see, so it's locked in place. So I'm gonna show you that in more detail because this is a handy way of doing it. Now, uh, if you're going to drill these holes, you have to make sure that you're using the right size of drill. Uh, or cutout piece and or saw, whatever you want to call this, and this is what I'm using, and that works pretty well. So the first thing we're going to do now is to mark uh, where we want to have the uh, insert of the wall socket. And this is going to be right here at 25 centimeters, but that depends on your physical installation. Uh, I like it at 25, and I like to have it at the same height all around the room, so that's what I do. And then all we just need to do is drill the hole. Now the cable is already in the back so I can grab it. But if you have not placed a complete wall yet, then you can get from behind the panel which is next to it because you still have to install that one. And that's it. We got a nice little hole. And in essence, 
this should now just fit properly see that's how it goes in but you can imagine now that this is not going to be very solid so now we want to place this piece in the back of the wall but can't get it through it now if the previous panel was not installed yet and that's the best approach now would be the time to slide it in from the back and then bolt it down but in our case we can't do this so we need to do something else and since this is not fitting I just cut it into pieces and here is that part and now I can move it into the back so let me show you that the only issue is you shouldn't be dropping it and lock it in place Oops, seems like my battery is running low and then we put the second piece in here we go it's a little bit of fiddling but it's not that hard to do watch out you don't drill into your fingers there we go now we got that wooden try this out fits nicely I'm just gonna put a few more screws up so we can hold it in place all around And that's it and now you see those lips here when I'm gonna turn the screw they, they will catch behind the wood and that will hold it firmly into place all right and see how that starts locking down And that's how it's done. Of course, I still have to pull the cable through it, but I just need to grab it in the back and pull it through the hole, and that's it. Installing the drywall was quite a job in this place. Uh, the ceilings are high, and there's a lot of fiddling around I had to do, so I have the drywall installed on this side. I still have to finish it off, as you've seen in the other videos, but the other wall on the other side is already complete, and the back wall is complete. But I also need to do something about the windows, uh, the wall where the windows are in, because I had quite some questions from you on how I'm going to fix that. Let me show you what I've done on those windows. So you might remember when we installed the window frames that some people had concerns about how do I hold these window frames into place because I didn't put any supporting nails or brackets onto it. And what I've done is actually I glued the windows into place with polyterrene glue, uh, expanding foam basically. And that was holding the windows very well. But some of you asked me the question, are, are they not gonna blow out? Are you not gonna secure them more? Well, actually I did, because what I've done is I installed OSB panels onto a frame, onto the wall, and they are pushing against the window frame. So now the window frame on the outside is locked in place by the bricks, and at the inside it's locked in place by this OSB panel. And that's holding it very well in place. Now there's something about OSB panels. OSB is actually kind of chipboard with big pieces of wood inside and they come in different thicknesses and it's ideal for constructions in houses and floors and false floors and all that but you got to be careful with it you but you shouldn't be using OSB panels if your walls are not dry covering up a bad wall structurally or a bad wall with OSB panels is really bad because you're going to create rot behind it and that's something you don't want to do so you got to make sure that your walls are structurally sound and that they are dry and that's why it's good to measure the humidity of your walls before you do so and this building has been sitting here without the heat for many many years in fact windows were even broken so it's been subject to a lot of rain in fact recently we've had a lot of rain so um, i did inspect the walls of course for the structural strength and they were quite all right we did some fixes as you've seen in previous videos and I also checked for dryness and for that I'm using a dryness meter so I'm going to stick it into the wall I'm going to show it to you to see how dry the walls are even after all the rain we had recently and that's important because if the walls were not dry enough I would never place OSB panels up so let us measure the humidity on the walls and let's stick it in there and see how much we've got so we got like 18-19% so that's good 
Let me move it over a bit. Yeah, it's around 20-23%, which is all right. I installed those USB panels still isolated from the wall. And I used for that polyterrain glue. This is kind of foam glue. You've seen me using that before. Very handy. So what I do is I line out with some pieces of wood, first of all, the wall so it's straight. And then I tag on those small pieces with the glue. So the glue actually is kind of an insulation in between the wall and the wood so you don't get the humidity through. And then uh, put some other wood up uh, to align everything. And then I put the board up and I'll nail it down onto that structure. And in between the wall and the board, it's completely filled up with polyterrain expanding glue. So in fact, the whole board is now isolated from the wall. And that's the way I do it. But again, if your walls are dry, it's good to do it. But if your walls are not dry enough, if you are about 50% of humidity in your wall, don't do this because that would be bad. First of all, you need to fix the walls. So let me show you some details. Here is a bit of a detail. So we've got the wall. Then you see this polyterrain glue sticking out and that's pretty solid by now. And then you see some alignment wood uh, and a block. So this is the first block that I placed onto the wall, glued on there, as you can see. And I have a couple of those on different uh, areas. That allowed me then to put a, another piece of wood uh, straight on it from top to bottom, which is impregnated. And then I put the actual panel onto that. And then in between, I filled it completely up with polyterrane glue. Uh, and this is how I mount the OSB panels. They are rock solid. There's no way this is going to move. And this is now a good basis to put finally my drywall up to that. If you're installing drywall, then you're going to end up sometimes with an outer corner or an inner corner. Now, inner corner is another problem. You just place the panels together and I typically don't even fill them up with joint filler in that corner because it's going to crack anyway. Silicon or some kind of uh, silicone type is always great in these corners that you can overpaint. So that's what I typically do in corners because corners that are inner corners have to be a bit elastic. However, an outer corner like this, you need to protect because this is a, a doorway. So people will probably bump into this corner here. So therefore you need to install what we call an enforcement, uh, steel enforcement on it. Um, there's different types on it. And this I'm gonna plaster in. And that's why it's so important that the slanted side, the thinner side of the boards on both sides are facing the outer corner. Otherwise you can't plaster that in nicely and evenly. So remember that, uh, if you have outer corners, you have to enforce it. And you'll see me doing that as soon as I put the plaster up. So let's put up some more drywall around the windows. Bringing up these boards has always been a bit of an annoyance uh, because it's so high up and I don't have a proper staircase. So, uh, you know, it's something really great. You just have to, yeah, lunge. Um, <laughs> And now I'm probably blocking the camera, I guess. But all right. So I have to bring up six of those guys and then um, we can start. I had to bring up all the ones before. It's not the first time I do this, so um, I'm kind of used to it. It's good to wear anti-slip gloves because otherwise these things can easily slip. All right. <clears throat> now I know you can get these boards uh, in different sizes. These are 60 centimeters or about two feet. Uh, these boards are about one meter 20 but they're a bit too wide, especially if you work on your own. And these are like half an inch boards thickness. So uh, that is a bit tough to work on your own, the big panels. These smaller ones, it's still handable, especially because I have to move it through the doorways and up the ladders. Uh, if I had easy access, it would be different. Then I would go for the wider panels because then I have less joints to finish off. All 
I tell you, this is a good exercise for this old man. You know, it already started with a six, but I still feel like 30. There we go. So now uh, I'm going to start measuring. Um, let's see. At the bottom I have 36. At the top I have almost 36. So I'm just going to write it down on the wall so that's easy to remember because I need to cut this board like so. And 36, 38. I think that's what I got. The height is 91. So 91. So this is the side that's going to face the window frame. So that's the side I want to cut off because I want to have the slanted corner here uh, for my enforcement. So let me measure this off and then we can stick it on and cut it. 54 and 54. I'm keeping my knee on the ruler because that way you can cut it better, it doesn't slide away. And I shouldn't be talking too much while I do this. Alright, that's one. And that is easy to break off. Uh, like so. We can cut this off. So that's the part that needs to go out. I've done quite often a mistake by <laughs> cutting off the wrong parts. It's stuff that happens. Yep, that looks quite all right. And let's see on the top there. Yep, that's good. So now all I need to do is screw it onto the OSB panel. butterfly here. Wonder what this guy is doing here. <laughs> Look at this. Oh well. Wow. All right. So that's good. That's in place. I still have to put the piece up on the top, but we do that last. So now let me do the other wall. This poor little butterfly has been with me now for a while. I guess it's going to be the end of his days. So I can set it outside free, but it's probably going to die. It's too cold outside. If I'm placing drywall, I try to use as much as I can. Now for the tablet here, just underneath the window, I actually use two parts and I don't mind. I just got a V groove in it and then I will fill this up with joint filler. Uh, you don't always need to waste the full board on that. Right. And this is a typical example of an external corner where we're going to place the enforcement rail up. Huh? This metal rail has to go up here eventually and we're going to plaster that in nicely with joint filler. Now let's measure the top part uh, and see how white that is supposed to be. And this is also 54, 54, 
I need a panel. 55-55 and it needs to be 85 high. Okay, so now uh, we're going to cut those and um, install them. So I need to cut off a little bit here. That's the thing about old houses. Uh, nothing is ever 100% straight. Now I'm done with the sides of the window all around. So now we need to do the side wall here. And this is a very small wall, but this, remember, is an outer corner. So again, we'll have to have this enforcement on these edges here. Um, and therefore, I need to have a slanted side. So I'm gonna waste a bit of board here. At the inside, we have an inner corner. There, I don't worry too much about it. Um, I'm just gonna fill this up with an elastic joint, as I said before. Now, uh, to do this, I'm just gonna take the board and place it along this wall, but backwards. And then I'm just going to trace it on the side uh, where to cut it. And so that's an easy way of doing it. Just going to place it along the side, like so. And then we just pencil trace it. Make sure it's nicely aligned with the back wall. And then we should be good to go. All right, and now it's just a matter of cutting it. Now for this, uh, I'm going to glue this plasterboard onto the wall with this polyterrain glue. So I have to give it a good shake. And then we'll apply it to the um, plasterboard in the back. We let it sit for a while, and when it becomes a bit sticky, then we place it onto the wall. Now I know I've given it a lot of it, but that's because of the type of a wall. It has quite some uneven areas, so I want to make sure that everything is actually fitting quite well and snug. So let's see. No, not right. You've got to wait a few more minutes before you put it up. Now once you put this on the wall, you can't pull it off anymore. It's got to go on correctly from the first moment, because if you pull it off, you have to start all over again with spraying new uh, polyterene glue on it. And you just need to hold it a few seconds until it's in place and then you should be all done. So that is very easy to work with. So folks, we have come to the end of this video and I still have a bit of a drywall to be put onto the walls, but I will finish that up and then I will apply the plaster and the joint filler as you have seen in my previous videos. And once all that is done, I'm going to show you the final result. In fact, I will show you also on how you place these corner protections. Um, and then we're going to sand the whole thing all over again. And then finally, we're going to give it a base coat of paint. There's still a lot of other work to be done. And you'll see that like this is a doorway. So I'm going to build a new oak door here. So you'll see that in the video. We also have to sandblast or shot blast this, these oak beams here. Uh, so that's all coming in the next video, besides the other videos on cars and so on. So please provide any comments if you want, because I'm always keen to read your comments. So thank you for viewing, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye.